Welcome to part two of this debt calculator and tracker tutorial. In the previous video, I showed you how to make this debt calculator using the snowball method. And in this part, I will show you how to make this debt tracker. So if you haven't seen the previous part, go there and make that first if you like. If not, this can be a standalone tutorial. There are just some areas that take from the previous tab, but instead of doing that, you can type in whatever you like here and all the formulas will still apply. But for the purposes of this being a second part, I'm just going to link the previous tab to this one. And as a reminder, I do have a template of this on my website if you just wanna go download it there. In this debt tracker, the only thing you need to do is track the date of a payment and what the payment was. Everything else is automated, including this little pie chart over here, and it shows you the total starting balance, how much you've paid off, and the percentage paid off, and then the remaining balance as well. So let's get started. So we've made our debt calculator. Let's add a tab and label this debt tracker. Let's click column G and do command shift right arrow key or control shift right arrow key on a PC. Right click and insert 20 columns to the right. We're gonna resize these columns real quick, so stick with me. Hold down the command or control button and select A, E, I, M, so every fourth one. Q, U, Y, A, C, A, G, AK, AO, and then we'll do the last two, AS and AT. We'll right click, resize to 25. Now we're going to select all the columns to the right of each of these ones. So B, hold down the command or control button, F, J, N, R, V, Z, A, D, A, H, A, L, and that's it. Right click, resize, to 120. AP, we're going to resize to 150. And lastly, we're gonna do these in clusters. So C, D, G, H, K, L, O, P, S, T, W, X, A, A, and A, B, A, E, and A, F, A, I, A, J, A, M, A, N, A, Q, and R, A, R. <laughs> resize to 75. Okay, we got all those done. If you'd like a header, we can highlight B2 to J3, merge, or however big you want it really, but um, debt payoff tracker. And we can center that both ways, bold, make it bigger. But obviously you don't need a header. Um, now we'll go to B5 to D5, merge. And if you made the previous calculator, what you'll do is equals, and we'll go to the debt calculator, and click that first debt there. But if you didn't make the calculator, you can just type in the debt here. Below that, we'll type in current balance, then minimum payment, and interest rate. I'll merge C6 and D6, and then I'll just drag that down. Current balance, we'll have a formula, we'll get into that. Minimum payment, we'll do equals, and then we can go to this debt one, this minimum payment, so that should be G8. And for the interest rate, it is below it in the calculator there too. So what I can do is just drag this down and it'll show me there. But we'll come back to this current balance in a bit. I don't know, if you watched the other video, you heard that I'm a little sick, so I apologize for my voice. Let's highlight row nine and 12. And I don't really have a size in mind. Let's just do 15. No, let's do 10. This is where our progress bar is gonna be. So I wanted it to be a little bit larger. I'll highlight B11 and C11, and we'll come back to that formula. But I'm just gonna highlight these two and do all borders up here. And I guess I could do a border around this as well. I'll do the outer border and the vertical border. Then I'll just highlight the header there and do an outer border. I'll highlight this area one more time and do gray vertical borders. Okay, now in cell B13, date, then payment, then balance. Let's merge B14 and C14 and type in starting balance. And in here we'll do equals and select the starting balance from the previous tab, which was a thousand. And I'll just highlight all these and do borders. Oh, make it black and then do all borders. 
In B10, type in paid off. And in C10, I can do D14, the starting balance, minus the current balance, which we'll get to. Let's make the borders for this first debt table. So what we'll do is go as far down as you like. I'll probably just go to 54 and I'll do an outer border, a vertical border, and then go to this row, two rows below it, and then do command shift down arrow key. And let's just delete those rows. This is where you're gonna be adding dates. So I'll just highlight that area, do data and data validation add a rule and select is valid date and click done. So now when you double click into the cell, you have a date pop up. And these cells will be formatted as a currency. So I'll just go to format as currency up here. These will be automated. So I'm just gonna make the fill color a gray so I know it's automated. And this formula will be if parenthesis C15 less than greater than quote quote comma parenthesis D14 minus C15 parenthesis comma quote quote parenthesis. So I'll just put $100 in there and we'll do the current balance formula now. Let's do equals if B15 is greater than one comma parenthesis V lookup parenthesis max parenthesis and let's highlight B15 to B54 parenthesis, comma, now let's highlight B15 to D54, so the entire table, comma, three, comma, zero, quote, quote, comma, and then select D14, enter. To explain this formula a little bit, on the outer edge here, so here and here, is an if statement. So if B15, this first date, is greater than 1, so it checks whether a date exists in the first row, basically, and if there is a date, then it will do the function that we put. But if there's not a date, then it's just going to show me the starting balance, which is in D14. So to explain this cluster of formulas, so this max formula here, is looking at the date column, so B15 to B54, and it will show me the most recent date entered. So all of these together, this VLOOKUP or vertical lookup, it's looking for the latest date in column B, this max, and then once that's found, it returns the value from column D because here this three is column three. So it knows that one, two, three, and the zero is for exact matches only. Let's do the progress percentage which would just be equals C10 divided by D14, the starting balance. And then we'll just format that as a percentage and we can center that. One thing I'm going to quickly add at the beginning is if error, parenthesis, comma, and parenthesis. So if there is an error, it's just gonna show me nothing basically. But if there's not an error, it's gonna do this function. Let's get into the progress percentage bar equals spark line parenthesis and then select that percentage comma curly brace in quotes we'll type chart type my goodness chart type comma and then in quotes bar semicolon in quotes color one comma in quotes and then you can type in a color here or a color code right now i'll just do green semicolon in quotes max comma one end curly brace and one end parenthesis. And now we have a little progress bar, but similar to what I did here, I'm gonna add if error at the beginning, if error parenthesis, and then at the end comma end parenthesis. All right, so in D15, I'm just gonna drag that all the way down and I'll go back up to borders and clear the borders and then just do the outer border. I'm going to click this rectangle to highlight everything and I'm just gonna do center alignment both vertically and horizontally. Now's a good time to do some fill colors. I'll do a green here, a blue, maybe a gray, and I'll do the gray horizontal borders if I didn't already. I'll put an outer border around the header maybe and make it a pink, okay. So now we can just copy and paste nine times. And we may have to go in and refill like the debt name and stuff, but so I'll delete this really fast and I'm going to highlight everything and copy and paste it nine times. 
But you can ignore the things that are pasted. We're going to go in and fix everything. Okay, so in this cell, we're going to go back to the calculator and select debt two. The minimum payment for debt two. And we can drag that down. This adjusted so we don't need to do anything there. This is good, this is good. We can change this to a currency format though. And do that border. And we'll be sure to fix the starting balance as well. And then just go through and continue filling in all the debts. It's a little tedious, but worth it. All you'll need to refill in is the name of the debt, the minimum payment, the interest, and the starting balance for each. So for this one, I'll do equals debt four equals minimum payment for debt four, drag that down, and then just the starting payment. Okay, once you've got all that done, the last thing that we're going to do is the payoff progress table. So let's highlight AP5 to AR5 and title it payoff progress. Underneath, we'll do starting balance and then paid off and we'll merge these two cells together. We can highlight all of those and do all borders. Let's highlight AP8 to AR20. Merge those, this is where the pie chart's gonna go. And then down here we'll do remaining balance and highlight these two cells and do all borders and then for this one, outer border. So the starting balance formula will be equals sum and then we can actually just highlight D14 all the way. Okay, well that's not working for me, so I'm going to AN14. So all the way to the end here, and click enter. And for paid off, we can do the same thing, equals sum, and highlight this paid off row. And click enter. And this percentage will be equals what was paid off divided by the starting balance. And then we'll just make that into a percentage. So once I add a date here and then a number, you can see that it added the paid off and gave me a percentage here. And the remaining balance is equal starting balance minus paid off. Let's highlight AP6 to AQ7 and you can click insert chart. A pie chart will most likely pop up automatically. Let's select donut chart. We'll go over to customize chart style and we can remove the background, remove the border color. We can go to pie slice and select our colors here. So starting balance, we can make like a light red and then select the drop down, click paid off and I'll make that a green. We can exit out and then kind of shape it into this area. I might go back to customize and the legend, I'll do none. Okay, and the last thing you can do is just go through and color code everything. As you make your payments, you can log them here and everything will adjust automatically. Now you may see when you add a date, it does go to 100, but as soon as you add a payment, then it'll go to its accurate percentage. The most important thing, view, show, and uncheck the grid line. And there you have it. That is the end of the debt payoff calculator and tracker tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I do have templates on my website and also a Google Sheets course that goes a little bit more into Google Sheets. But that is it, and I hope you guys have a good day.